Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum, and um, Barbie the Whiskey Cat. So hello, Barbie. Um, anyway, right, okay. So um, today's episode of the show, well, it's um, obviously, as you can see, uh, Invergordon again. Um, this is not the first time I've done an episode of the show on Invergordon. And um, it actually wasn't my first choice. Um, the, 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 the episode I was planning to do has had to be delayed a bit because um, missing uh, a sample which I've been uh, told will be um, forthcoming shortly so um, it was a case of hmm, what do I do instead and uh, it's not like I haven't got whiskey samples uh, <laughs> got buckets of the bloody things I mean I've got cupboards full of boxes and what have you but this particular array of samples has been sat on my desk for probably about I guess about a year now um, and it's often the way of these things, you know, other uh, samples come come one's way and I think, yeah, I really need to do an episode of the show on them and, and some just get kind of shuffled down the line. I mean, I've got the hoods that I'd like to do, but obviously um, there's only so much time, isn't there? So anyway, um, I don't really have to go into very much detail about Invergordon because I think this is the third episode of the show I've done on Invergordon and as you know, I'm a big fan of old grain whiskies and um, probably a few other ones like I uh, don't think I've ever done Girvan or Cal Caledonian or something like that um, so it'd be interesting I'll have to dig out a, a few samples of those and, and work through the grain distilleries because um, grain distilleries un unlike sort of uh, malt distilleries don't tend to have much in the way of a, of a recognisable character per se I mean obviously they're all uh, column distilled and their general um, uh, reason for existence is to produce neutral grain spirit and by its very nature neutral grain spirit is neutral and you can sort of I suppose loosely categorize the the grain distilleries with regards to um, the, the weight and the heaviness or lack of heaviness should we say of the actual spirit how oily it is how crisp that kind of thing and so I suppose at certain one end of the spectrum you've got distil distilleries like say Gervin and Invergordon which tend to be towards the sort of the lighter crisper end of the spectrum and then you've got distilleries like I suppose North British Caledonian um, which tend to produce a slightly heavier oilier uh, spirit so um, but by and large because they spend an inordinate length of time in the cask they it's very difficult to sort of say oh yeah that's a, an Invergordon or that's a Caledonian or that's a Gerben when it's spent about 40 odd years in the cask and you're getting predominantly cask uh, and um, oxidation characters and, and you get maybe a, a sort of a graininess but in saying that, I mean that's that's part of the wonderful thing about uh, about grain whiskies. As you know, they age for you know a considerable length of time. And today I've got uh, obviously a fifty-year-old um, to uh, to share with you guys. And uh, um, and because they're grain whiskies, they're not as expensive as uh, as malts. And you know you get a lot of bang for your buck, shall we say, with uh, if you're into old whiskies um, and. <laughs> Who isn't, shall we say? So, anyway, um, I just like to say a big thank you to everyone that carries on uh, commenting about the show and uh, all the, the nice comments you guys kind of leave. It's really appreciated. And um, although I don't quite have the viewing figures of uh, other um, bloggers and um, what have you, um, well, I'll get there eventually, I hope. And uh, um, I'll keep plugging away and uh, um, with this uh, unique format, I think. So, uh, anyway. Um, I guess that's enough of that, so let's uh, let's have a look at today's lineup then, shall we? Can you tell that you are your life? Right, okay, so uh, I suppose one of the reasons why um, I quite sort of I quite like him Gordon is it was one of the, the first grain whiskies that uh, I actually tasted when I first sort of started in the whiskey industry and um, sort of back then there wasn't very many independents that were actually sort of bottling grain whiskies. Uh, I mean, some Duncan Taylor were one of the the, the very first um, that I can recall, anyway. And certainly, they they theirs was the first um, Invergordon I actually tasted. And um, I mean, since since then, um, pretty much most independents will actually do uh, a grain whiskey of some form or description occasionally, some more regularly than others. And talking of 
more regularly than others. We're going to kick off first with uh, Douglas Lang uh, bottling, who seem to have an inordinate amount of uh, casks of, uh, of grain whiskey. This is um, an 18 year old that was bottled in their old particular range. Uh, it was distilled in May of uh, 1997, bottled in June of 2016 from a refill barrel at 48.4%. This is a bit of an archive tasting, it has to be said. These are relatively old samples, so whether they're still available or not, of course, I couldn't honestly say. Um, this, we're basically going to start with the youngest and move upwards. So the ne next bottle we're looking at is the 21-year-old uh, uh, Clandenny Douglas Lang bottling. Now, obviously, the Clandenny label seems to have disappeared now um, with regards to their grain bottlings, as they're all being bottled in the old particular range, which is a bit of a shame. Um, because I kind of like the separation, shall we say, rather than having you know them all under a kind of one label. I like the fact that you know the Clan Denny range had a different label and all that kind of stuff. And um, but anyway, you know that as, as long as they're being bottled, I really don't care what they're being bottled in. To be honest with you, so um, this was distilled in June of 1993 and bottled in September of 2014. Uh, again, bourbon aged and bottled at 51.1 percent. <clears throat> Third bottling we'll be looking at is 24 year old AD Rattray bottling. Uh, this was distilled in 1991, uh, cask number uh, 39033, and bottled in 2015 at 59.9%. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, fourth bottling we'll be looking at is the, I think this is the only bottling of Invergordon that Carl Moore have actually done. This was uh, in their uh, celebration of the cask range. Uh, it was a single American oak cask, 903820, not quite Beverly Hills 90, yeah, um, and uh, so it's 30 years old, it was distilled in October of uh, 1987 and bottled in October of last year at 43.4, <laughs> lost a fair old amount of uh, alcohol over the years, or alcohol content. Uh, then we're going to move on to another um, AD Rattray bottling. Yes, I know you want to get there. Um, this is a 43 year old, uh, distilled in uh, 1972, bottled in 2016. Again, a single bourbon cask number 39. Can't believe that was the 39th cask that was actually, well, I might be actually thinking about it. I mean, distillery was uh, what, open late 60s, I think. Um, but so it's, it's, it's arguably possible it's the 39th cask that was distilled at the distillery. Um, so anyway, this was bottled, uh, like I said, in 2016 at 48.9%. And then we're going to do the really old one. Uh, this is a Hunter Lang Sovereign Invergordon, uh, distilled the year we won the World Cup, 1966. Uh, but a few months before that, I hasten to add, uh, it was distilled in March of 1966 and bottled in May of uh, 2016 at 50%. So that's today's episode of the show. Hopefully it will show how um, Invergordon spirit reacts with you know extended maturation and oxidation and um, yeah this hopefully should be, uh, be a bit of fun shouldn't it pretty cat? Yes. Okay. <laughs> right so um, Let's kick off with uh, with the baby then, shall we? Right, okay, so let's kick off with the uh, the 18 year old. Now, I think this is probably going to be a little bit on the young side. I mean, I've often said that realistically, you shouldn't really bottle grain whiskey much before about sort of 21. And even then they tend to be a little bit on the young side. I mean, that's just the um, the nature of the uh, of the spirit. And they just they need time to obviously pick up uh, wood character and what have you. But anyway, let's, let's see what knows with us on this. It is quite fresh. It's quite a botanical. Um, it's quite light. It's herbal. Um, there's a little bit of oak character, a little bit of vanilla. It's all quite sort of sat in the background and it's kind of just kind of indicative, I suppose, of what grain whiskies are like when they are sort of sub 20 odd years old. They come across almost sometimes like an oak aged vodka because in essence that's what they really are. Um, this has got more of a, like I say, a kind of gin-like botanical kind of character. There's some nice lemon notes, some lemon balm. Um, 
but you know you're not going to get an awful lot of depth and character from the actual spirit itself so you're going to get it from oxidation you're going to get it from the oak and at 18 years old it's just really not spent enough time in the oak um, to give it you know a huge complexity but in saying that it's a lovely fresh nose there's a nice smokiness to the oak um, and although it's a refill cask it's probably quite I imagine quite an active refilled cask um, and uh, yeah it's, it's, it's pleasant it's kind of you know what you would expect from a young grain whiskey so that's like Crisp, light, fresh, touch more oak, bit more toastiness, quite a lot of vanilla. So again, um, one's theory about it being a, a fairly active cask seemed to be um, shown by the, the, the oak character on the, on the palate. Um, it's a bit short, there's a little bit of spice. It's not overly complex as I would ex expect it, or as I would not expect it as the case may be. Um, but again, it's pleasant and it just shows what young grain whiskey is all about and um, I think anything less than that it, you are really in the sort of you know oak aged vodka kind of territory and um, like I said I think it just that really could have done with a little bit more time but it kind of showcases the you know what a young grain whiskey is uh, is all about so um, so a nice start right now. Right, okay, so let's move on to the 21-year-old Clan Denny bottling. Let's uh, see what those gives us on this. Now, it's got that kind of lemony, fresh kind of character, but the, it feels a lot heavier, a lot oilier. And, and, and here we go with that sort of like, you know, you, you make a sort of uh, a general um, kind of comment uh, as to the sort of the, the, the characteristic of the, uh, the the spirit, and then suddenly you taste one, it's completely completely different to uh, your, your, your uh, presumptions. And um, this has got a slightly more oilier, heavier consistency to it. Again, there's that lemon, a light botanical note. Again, not hugely complex. Some background oak, some vanilla, less toastiness to the uh, the vanilla. Um, or to the oak, I should say, is a maybe a little bit of coffee note kind of coming through. Um, but again, this is it's very much young, crisp, um, or not so crisp as the case may be, fresh probably, um, uh, grain spirit character. Let's see what the power's like. bit lighter, more botanical, more like um, the um, the 18 year old. It's got that really gin like kind of almost junipery kind of character. Um, they kicked off with a little bit more oak but that oak kind of just tailed off pretty quickly. It was slightly milky, slightly creamy in character um, but it didn't last very long before the, the emphasis then shifted to the grain spirit character and it's got a lovely kind of grainy spice and that's one of the things I often kind of mention in my tasting notes is a grainy spice and um, th that just kind of like sort of seem is indicative of, of grain whiskey it has that kind of verb and spice kind of character which is often what you want when you when you're making a blended whiskey you want sort of like the malt to be sort of like your basis but you want the grain to give it just that little crispness that little edge to um, the proceedings rather than well of course if, like we know that all, all blended whiskies are all made to a price point so if you you know if you're producing a an inexpensive blend you're going to use a lot of grain a lot of young grain and it, it'll taste like it but anyway coming back to this particular one it's a little bit more weight than the previous one but again it's very young it's very sort of grain spirit orientated so but again you know 
pleasant, interesting, and um. Done and done and done. You right. Okay. So let's move on to 24-year-old. This is uh, you know, bottled in uh, 2015 at 59.9%. So plenty of alcohol here. Now we're starting to get a little bit more of that oxidised, mature apricot character coming through. Again, it's got a, a, a weight somewhere between the, the, the first two. It's got, a, it's got a nice kind of crisp, fresh edge, but it's also got you know, quite a, an oiliness as well. A really nice weight. The, and again, the oak is not too in your face. I mean, I certainly remember... Um, some of the old uh, uh, Douglas uh, Duncan Taylor bottlings were, well, dead oak monsters, you know. Um, but this has got, again, it's got a really nice balance to it. And it's now starting to show what happens to a grain whiskey once it's been in the cask for a couple of decades. You're starting to get the interaction between the spirit and the air. You're starting to get the dried fruits. You're starting to get the oxidised fruit character. Um, and... Uh, Hopefully by the time we get to the end of this, you know that they'll start to display either the rummy sort of st character or the cognacy kind of armagnacy kind of character. But at the moment, this is kind of at the sort of beginning, shall we say, almost of the uh, uh, the, the maturation cycle. I would say. No, it's got a lovely deck. Really, very, very nice. Let's see what the pals like. lot more oak, really gritty, tannic, um, peppery, spicy. It seems like the, the alcohol has really kind of pulled out all those kind of wood spices and it's that absolute riot of wood spices. And then you get the sort of like the, the, the sort of crisp graininess of the uh, of the spirit kind of coming through on the end and it's whoa, add that to the alcohol and it's pretty austere stuff. It has to be said, it really dries out the mouth but it's got a real intensity to it. Um, not getting a huge amount of the oxidised fruit character that, that I could find on the nose. I mean, maybe adding a smidgen of water to it will bring those out, so we shall give that a try. Um, and uh, let's, uh, let's see if that uh, has done that. Yeah, I mean, it's lightened the nose no end now. It's got that... You can smell it's slightly older, slightly more mature, but it's sort of lost the um, oxidised fruit. Um, certainly getting a lot more oak smoke, wood smoke, um, toast, char. But again, it's got that lovely lemony kind of character to it, which I think is really quite pleasant. So what the palate's like now. Yeah, the, the oak is now kind of sitting back a little bit. It's not so gritty, it's not so spicy, it's a little softer, there's more vanilla. Um, I am getting a little uh, oxidised fruit kind of character coming through now. Um, so the balance is kind of... No, argue, it, all right, I mean, it's kind of a trade-off, isn't it? You taste it neat, you get the, the real intensity of, uh, of the wood, the spices and all that kind of stuff. You put a little drop of water with it, you lose a little bit of that intensity, but you gain maybe a greater overall complexity, if you see what I mean. Um, and still, that a fabulous old grain, but well, young grain whiskey, really, in, in, in relative terms. Um, yeah, that's impressive. Okay, so let's move on to the Carnmore 30 year old. Let's uh, see what uh, the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Again, fresh, lemony, um, a little bit more of the sort of oxidised fruit than the. Um, uh, the, the AD Rattray bottling, but not a huge amount, it has to be said. Um, still quite 
quite light it's got some and some pleasant oak again some toasty oak but I'm now starting to get a little bit more I think again this is probably a slightly more active um, cask um, I'm, I'm getting sort of like um, a little bit of toffee certainly some coconut um, and this is the thing with grain whiskies is that because they spend so long in the cask and because they get so much character in the cask a lot of it is all down to a how the quality of the cask and you know whether you know how many times it's been it's been reused um, and I would guess again this is probably only well a second fill uh, if that um, it's got a lovely freshness to it uh, and again it's not you know the not particularly oily not particularly heavy a um, little bit of spice oxidized apricot bit of apple that's a lovely nose, absolutely delightful. Let's see what the palate gives us. Mmm, that's a lovely mouthful real coconutty finish almost almost bounty bar-esque but not quite so much dark chocolate it's actually some lot some quite pleasant white chocolate um, a little bit of toastiness I mean it's got quite a lot of oak character but it's not sort of in your face oak character there's a lot of um, vanilla and like I said white chocolate a touch of spice um, again it's got that sort of crisp uh, lemony um, grain character on on the mid palette and the finish um, but it, the balance is absolutely superb really really nice and um, mm, mm, yeah if that had a bit more dark chocolate that would be a liquid bounty bar but uh, even so mm, lovely wasn't it lovely Okay, so let's move on to the 43 year old. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this end. Almost as old as me. <laughs> oh, 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 now that is nice. Now we're getting that sort of slightly cognac y um, oxidised apple, apricot. Again, some lovely fresh um, oak character, um, almost sort of sawn wood shall we say. Um, it's not quite that sort of dusty American oak character that I often find in um, old malt. It's got that, like I say, it's got that more kind of sawn wood kind of character. Again, the spirit itself has got a lovely lemony fresh character. Um, there's a touch of spice. Oh, but the depth on that is absolutely superb. Again, I mean, you know, it, again, these are not exactly mega complex they don't quite have the complexity of a single mole but they do have depth and they do have interest and you know they have quality and um oh this is a lovely nose i mean you know it's just got that sort of just that right level of maturity um it's not too old um mm, let's see what power sign Mm. Mm. Again, coconut, chewy, dense, vanilla, spices, lovely oxidised apple, apricot. There's a, a, a almost kind of mature tropical note um, to the fruit. Um, not quite as, you know, sort of exuberant sort of tropical fruit carrier like something like Aaron, for example. But it's got that sort of edging towards a tropical note. The oak is really quite dusty and as you would expect from a sort of like an old uh, whiskey but even though I mean, it's still 48.9% and that, that alcohol really sort of gives the spices a, a bit of a bite on the finish. Um, 
Mm, I mean, that is absolutely stunning. That is a lovely old uh, whiskey, and um, but still got plenty of verb and life, and you know, it's just wonderfully balanced. So, mm, damn good. Right, okay. Um, let's move on to the 50 year old. <laughs> it's always. <laughs> It was a weird, bit of a weird feeling when you taste a whiskey that's as old as you are, I suppose. Um, but anyway, let's see what the nose goes on this. Ooh. Mmm. Pure licorice. Um, licorice, treacle, dark coffee, coffee grains. Or almost, we're starting to edge towards kind of an almost kind of molassy sort of almost rummy kind of character but again the spirit still has that sort of light crisp character which kind of balances it up um mm, touch of vanilla vanilla pods rather than sort of like you know um vanilla character um sort of vanilla essence should we say um a real purity and a lovely sort of woodiness as a burnt, sort of burnt wood smoke. Um, again, like I said, treacle. It's got a lovely balance of light and darkness, uh, is what I'm trying to get at. And um, that is just absolutely stunning. I mean, and you know, this would have been, I mean, I don't know how, I can't remember, um, but you know, this. This would have been, you know, really, really well priced, I think. Um, mm. See what the power's like. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. cinnamon lace spices on the finish dark toffee treacle but again the grain spirit just keeps that balance it keeps a lightness there it stops it becoming overly treacly overly rich there's some lovely dried fruits it's wonderfully mature it's got elegance um mm, a real mouthful lovely spicy finish soft almost sweet spice coffee chocolate Molasses. Mmm, mmm, damn, that's good. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Firstly, big thank you to um, Douglas Lang, Hunter Lang, A.D. Rattray, and Morrison and Mackay for the samples for today's show. Uh, always uh, appreciate it and hopefully I've um, done your samples some, some justice so um, I think um, yes ow ow oh um <laughs> but he can't want to come back for the for the finish um, anyway so right what was, where was I so yeah okay um, I think this has kind of shown that sort of you know that the Invergordon like I said has is at the sort of the lighter end of the spectrum as far as grain whiskies are concerned and I think the thing it's shown is that that kind of crisp grain character um, really balances and stays throughout the entire life of um, you know the, the, the maturation period uh, of the, the spirit and um, balances up the sort of the, the oxidation and the oak kind of character really really nicely um, so yeah the 18 year old old particular a bit young like I said, but I think it kind of showcased, you know, what sort of young grain whiskey is all about. And you can pretty much say the same thing for the Clan Denny bottling as well. Again, a touch on the young side, um, and maybe the, the, the odd one out amongst all this, because it had more of a weighty, heavy heavy character, uh, as opposed to sort of the, the lighter character that uh, all the other samples seem to show. So from that instance, yeah, quite, quite interesting. And uh, the uh, 24 year old um, AD Rattray bottling, well, I think this is that's the point where we started to get the oxidized fruit character, where the, uh, the combination of sort of being um, in contact with the air uh, has now started to actually develop these secondary characteristics. And um, at, that, at that point, 
onwards, that's where we were sort of into the sort of territory, the area, the age that sort of grain whiskies really should be bottled at. Um, the 30 year old was absolutely lovely. Again, I think it was kind of classically shown that, you know, uh, how a good cask um, is, is paramount with, with grain whiskies. You really need good wood. If you're going to keep it in the cask for that kind of length of time, uh, 30 odd years you really need absolutely top quality wood and certainly that was a great cast um, lovely sort of uh, coconut notes that were coming through from from the wood um, but again you know not not too coconutty um, the 43 year old uh, yeah again you know this prime sort of you know grain age really when you think about it and um, start again showing that lovely sort of maturity um, but still, you know, having that sort of nice crisp edge. And the, the Sovereign, well, I mean, it was always going to be the, the, the standout bottling of, uh, of the tasting, I think. But um, again, just absolutely amazingly balanced. And, um, you know, I, I guess, you know, one of these days I'll, I'll do a, a really, you know, old green whiskey episode of the show. I don't know if I've done one. I probably have done one. I mean, I've done, oh, God knows how many now, 280 odd... I think, you know, we're getting close to 300 um, and we'll probably be there, I imagine, in the new year. Um, so that might be an idea to do one then. Anyway, but <clears throat> coming back to the, the Sovereign, I think the thing with, with sort of, like I said, you know, you want a sort of like 50-year-old whiskey for three figures, then, you know, that's where you're going to get one. You know, you, you go anywhere else, you from any distillery you're going to be paying absolutely through the nose for a 50 year old so um that old grain whiskies are still just amazing value for money even now I, I would say so there you go that's this week's episode of the show in the bag i hope you've enjoyed it uh, another another look at invergordon um always good fun for the for, to do a, a grain whiskey episode of the show so um until next week all that's left to say is um good afternoon and good running <laughs>